Hi everyone, it's Brooke here from The Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to start on garden tours. Now I'm going to be, do, be doing my garden tours differently. I'm actually going to break my garden tours up into sections, like so sections of my garden at a time. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I grow a lot of plants from seed. And for those of you guys who are new to the channel, you may not have realized that. And so I have a lot of plants in my garden that you you will not be familiar with. You probably, you may not even know what they are because some of the varieties of plants that I've gotten are just very unusual. And so I wanna make sure I showcase each and every plant and that's gonna make garden tour videos way too long if I try to do it all in one video. Um, so I'm going to start doing it section by section. Um, so there'll be more garden tour videos. And I know you're probably thinking, well, you know, isn't that kind of overkill? Well, not really, because the thing is, I, I believe in gardening um, with having a dynamic garden. So my beds should look different and some and do look different from one month to the next because I'm all about a sequence of blooms. Um, I'm not about putting in one plant that blooms from spring to frost. I like to have my spring stuff, you know, early, mid, and late, summer, early summer, mid summer, late summer. I like to have a sequence, a sequence of blooms. It just makes to me it just makes it's more interesting in the garden. There's something always changing. There's something always new. Um, there's always something to look forward to in terms of blooms. Um, so um, it should be a lot of garden tour videos, but hopefully by keeping the, doing more videos and keeping them shorter, I should be able to post, keep up with that posting schedule. So we shall see. Um, so the first section that I'm going to do is the green section. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's the one um, section I really need to change because... I had a little issue um, with some of the plants. Um, and that's another thing, guys. You know, when you're growing plants from seed, they don't always react the way uh, in the ground that they say on the tag. And so it necessitates some shuffling around sometimes. Uh, this year, this at the end of the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of shuffling. Um, there's a lot of perennials that I started last year that are just now blooming. And so I'm getting to see them for the first time. And, you know, last year they were, they put on a lot of leafy growth, but they didn't do too much. But now because they're blooming, it's like, oh, that's how tall it's going to be. Oh, that's how wide it's going to be. And so I'm going to have to kind of shuffle some things around so that the beds don't look crazy. And it'll make more sense when I show you the green section. So let's head on out. Okay, guys, here we are in the green section which starts from this holly um, and it goes down into that section down there. Uh, with the green section, I did a green section with pink accents and that's what we're doing here. And then I did a green section with white accents. Uh, so let's look at the first section. Uh, so first things first, we have a Malva Moshada hollyhock. Now this is the pink variety and it looks pretty and nice and everything, but then we have the carnations down here. And the carnations do kind of clash a little bit uh, because the Malva Moshada, as you can see, has a lot more blue purple in it than pink. And this is more of a true pink. So, but unfortunately, this is one of those things that uh, the carnations didn't bloom till this year so I didn't really know what they were going to look like so I will have to remove one or the other of those then right here we have uh this is green twister echinacea last year maybe it wasn't this one maybe it was the other one over there which is right uh there but last year from what I remember these a cone flower were entirely pink they had no green on the tips so I'm not really sure what's going on but they are the color they're supposed to be this year uh, back there that one with it's the, got the really big black head that is a rude Beckia that's green wizard um, actually I do need to clip those plants back so that they'll bloom again uh, the leaves are the petals on it I guess I should say are a true green 
they're almost the same color as the petals as you can see from that one right there uh, this right here is a pink a hibiscus as you can see it's getting very big I need to actually spray everything in the garden with some neem oil because I'm getting bug damage uh, but it is nice and big it's bigger than it was last year and it's doing well uh, in this bed I have some zinnias I don't remember if this is envy or lime it's one or the other I'll see once it actually comes up um, and then right here is one of the green chrysanthemums uh, down here uh, this is the sulfid celosia so it is kind of like a chartreuse green um, it's really pretty and I just I really like it I wasn't too sure when it started but now that it's getting bigger I really really like it uh, I did have some poppies in the section I can't remember which poppy I put in here actually that one didn't open yet I guess we'll find that when that opens I think it may have been the, the um, maybe the cream peony but we shall see um, as you can see there are bees all over the section now with the now with the uh, roses let's see I've got what do I have in here I have Clotilde Super and then I think I've got Wollerton Old Hall on each end and so as you can see I've got some bug damage so uh, I'll give uh, this weekend I really need to give everything a good spray with neem oil and that should help with that so overall the section is filling in very nicely um, I think it'll look a lot better once the zinnias come up and start blooming and of course with all of the chrysanthemums uh, which are somewhere in here I think I'm losing them I think I have I can't find them right now I'll have to clip them back so they can f make sure they, they're nice and full for, um, for the fall. So um, overall, I'm very pleased with how the section is coming out. It's nice and full. Uh, there are different heights in here. Um, oh, you know what? What is, is that? I think that's a, is that a marigold? Uh-oh. Did I put a yellow marigold in here on accident? I think I might have done that. I think. Uh, actually, let me go down here and see. No, actually, you know what? I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to take some pictures of the leaves and see if I can figure out what that is. Because I really don't know. But it's the only one of those in here. So maybe it's a weed. Er. Okay, guys, I'll have to figure that out. Oh, you know what? I see one of the, uh, the chrysanthemums right there. Okay. And, oh, I think there's one right there. Okay, so they're, they're just tucked in here somewhere. So I'm going to clip them back and then give them some fertilizer, and this should do well for the rest of the season. So now let's go down to here to this section. This is the green with white section. Uh, so if you guys listen to my podcast on layering plants, then you guys will know that, should know, this was a bit of an accident. This was a bit of a mess. So uh, these are the Shasta daisies, which have fallen over. I need to get a support ring, maybe like one of the half hoop ones to hold that up. So it's not in the walkway. Um, and it doesn't crush the plants underneath of it. This is one of the green wizard Rudbeckia. Uh, now this right here, let me see if I can focus in on it, is one of the Cafe Creme Foxglove. Now on the tag and on everything I've seen online said that this was supposed to be 24 to 36 inches. Um, as you can see, it's a lot taller than that. Um, this right here is about level with my, about level with my chin and I'm five foot four. Uh, so actually I'm trying to think if I've got a, a, a ruler out here, 
Let's see if I can turn the camera around. Okay, guys, so I've got my head set in, so hopefully you guys can hear me with the microphone. Um, this is one of the foxglove. I'm holding my arm, let's see. I'm holding my arm like directly out. You can kind of see, especially with this one, um, how big it is. So they're really, they're really huge. So I noticed something. Oh, and then of course, here are the Shasta daisies. Uh, these got big too. And so these are only supposed to be like three feet tall, maybe four feet tall. Uh, so yeah, I guess four feet is about it. Um, but I was doing some research online and this one, um, this one European, it's like a, a UK website said that with foxglove, if you have foxglove in a bed, they help things grow taller. If that is cracked, I, that's the first time I've ever seen that. Then that is true because these Shasta daisies are kind of crazy. Uh, now guys, these are way too tall. They're blocking out the plants behind them. And I just realized that these little things right there, when you, uh, let me see if I can focus in on it. Okay. I switched. Let's see if I can do this guys. Okay. There we go. Here we go. See the, how you got those little hook things on the end of it. Well, that's because that's a seed pod. Uh, let me see if I can show you what an unopened bud looks like. I thought I saw some, but maybe I didn't. You know what, guys? I don't think I have any unopened buds. So all of these are, they're seed, they're just, they're seed pods. So I've got, I mean, just look at how many seed pods this would be. Uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need this many seed pods. Um, uh, in addition, oh, actually, here's an unopened seed, an open flower. That's what it looks like. So the other thing, oh, was there a bee? Oh yeah, the bee is climbing in the, do you notice that? The bee is climbing in the little bell. Sorry guys. Um, but anyway, I don't need all these seed pods. Uh, the other thing I also noticed is that if you go down this particular plant, there's all of these little lateral side shoots that haven't come out. And this one, like this, the top on this kind of snapped off, which makes me a little bit sad, but look, all the side shoots are now sending up little stalks with blooms on them. And so these are all unopened. So actually you guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these plants down. I'm gonna cut them down to maybe, uh, maybe right here. And if it's shorter, then hopefully the things behind it should get a little bit more light. Uh, so let me walk around. Actually, let me come right here first so I can show you what we can see. So in this section, we've got a green um, chrysanthemum. I think that one's woolman century. We have the scabby, uh, scabiosa fata morgana. Uh, there is a rose that's woolman century back there. And then back there, we have some chrysanthemum. You've got a peony. And then I see some lisianthus. And then there is a white, there's a white dahlia right there. And you can't even see in there. But I think if I take these, take this down to, you know, like I said, right here, um, it'll, you know, that should open it up so you can see like the, the, uh, the dahlia and, uh, oh, there's, that's right. I forgot there's zinnias down here too, um, to give them some more light. So that is the plan. So I just wanted to show this to you guys because I'm going to start, uh, maybe tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning I'll get up early and, and I'm just going to start whacking all this stuff back. Uh, so it's going to look very different. So like, just enjoy, just enjoy it. Uh, because yeah, it can't stay this way. So what I'm going to do for next year is that I'm actually going to, at the end of the season, I'm going to dig these up. And the reason being is that, uh, these, this particular foxglove 
is not a biennial. This one is listed as being a short-term perennial. So I'm going to dig them up and I'm going to move them further back in the bed. So like, for example, right there in that opening, you know, those are annuals. They're not going to come back, you know, next year. So I'll put one back there. Um, I may try to squeeze one right there. So, um, if I, so where I have spaces in the back row and let me see if I can walk around there. Okay. So, oh, guys, by the way, this is gladiolus. As a matter of fact, this one, wait, wait. Okay. Actually, is this gladiolus? Okay. That is a gladiolus. I think that's one of the purple ones cause it's, uh, back here. Uh, these gladiolus are starting to send up stalks. Um, so this will be interesting to see how tall these get because they do get taller every year. Um, but what I was saying is that everywhere I can fit something, like for example, there's an opening back here. I could probably squeeze a foxglove. I will try to get the foxgloves in, in the back. Um, you know, guys, I just realized that there's the Bell of, Bells of Ireland right there. Um, you know, when I planted this, like I said, I did not think the foxglove were going to get that tall. And so I know some of the stuff that's back here will do better once it's out of the way. Uh, this one right here, I'm not sure what's going on with those leaves. I may just yank that one because it's looking kind of bad. Don't know what that's all about. Uh, this is, oh, that chrysanthemum is doing surprisingly well considering the fact that it's shaded. Um, but once again... You know, once I start taking the foxglove down, I think that's going to open it up. Um, I don't know if you guys just saw that, but there was a lantern fly in my hand and I was trying to kill it. it didn't work very well, though. Um, so, yeah, so this, this, this. A chrysanthemum is doing surprisingly well considering the amount that it's getting shaded out ouch by things and I just grabbed a uh, rose thorn okay and so like I said I need to get this up off the ground so that it's not smothering the rose and um, actually this is gonna finish blooming in a little bit and I'm thinking I actually might go ahead, because I see, you know, little side shoots. I might actually go and Chelsea chop all of the, um, all of the daisies back. And hopefully that should just give this entire section a lot more light. And all of the other things that are in here, it'll give them time to kind of, you know, put on some growth. Like, for example, that chrysanthemum right there. Uh, I think there's some lysianthus somewhere in here. Um, ooh, and there's some zinnias back there that are just not, uh, just not, uh, really don't get to see the light of day. So anyway, guys, that's the plan for the green section. So yeah, so this, so I'm just, I'm enjoying it. I mean, part of me is a little bit sad because I like to see everything tall and it's clear that everything is happy but on the other hand i know that the other plants in here will be a lot happier once some of these things have been taken down so uh so that's what's up next for the green section guys it's going to be a chelsea chop so uh, th that is it for this episode um i guess in the next one section i'll do is the yellow section because i might have to whack some of that back <laughs> so um so anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to point out everything that I have so you guys can see. I know some of you guys have been eagerly waiting to see how all those seeds I planted came out. And uh, now you're getting to see. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.